Hi, in this video, I want to show you how we can use Java EE, aka Jakarta EE, together with MicroProfile for enterprise projects. So if you ask yourself, why will we even do that? Well, as you might know, currently Jakarta EE is being developed under the Eclipse Foundation. And while, while we're waiting for it, actually what we can do in enterprise projects to move on our projects for cloud native microservices is that we use well part of the micro profile initiative so plain java ee is as much as i like it is hardly enough to build modern cloud native microservices so for example we might have the need for including monitoring including distributed tracing or injectable configuration or resiliency patterns and while we could implement all these things ourselves it actually makes sense to build um, upon extensions that build on um, enterprise standards, on enterprise technology. And this is actually what MicroProfile enables us to do so. So what I want to show you here is that we actually can use enterprise Java EE projects with MicroProfile as somewhat extensions to fill these blanks, to fill the gaps. So what I have for you here is a so-called coffee shop project that for now is a Java EE8 project that you can see here. So that's a Maven palm file with the Java EE8 API being provided. And just because I'm brave enough, I used JDK 11 already to build this. But as you can see, this is only Java EE8. So there is no micro profile uh, in there yet. And what I want to show you is that you cannot only use plain micro profile only to build applications. Because if you have existing applications that typically use, well, persistence, right, such as JPA or more advanced concurrency functionality, then, well, you need some standards that are part of EE. And actually, I would argue it makes a lot of sense to still build upon this Java EE8 technology, but then use specific microprofile projects to fill these gaps, to fill what's needed. And in order to show you that, what I actually want to do is that I want to inject configuration and add some very basic resiliency to this very application with using MicroProfile standard, MicroProfile projects. So what I want to show you here is that we can enhance the Maven um, built Palm XML with, for example, the dependency for configuration. That's the MicroProfile com, uh, config API version 1.3. And very important, and I will talk about um, that a little bit later, we use the provided scope. So that means this dependency will not end up in our deployment artifact and we will still have a thin deployment um, archive, which is, uh, well, kind of important for, uh, for cloud native applications, I would argue. And the other thing we want to add is microprofile file tolerance, this dependency. So then, well, we can actually already use these technologies in our code. So we didn't change much already since this will not end up in our, uh, in our artifact, but at least within the project, we can now use the functionality, what I just briefly want to show you with two examples. So this one, that's a health check resource, a very basic and empty, well, JAXRS resource that only says, okay, once our application is fully deployed and we want to, well, inject some configuration into this one. So if you use microprofile configuration, there are so-called default config sources available. So for example, well, in a typical cloud native application, how we want to configure our application is well, from the outside of the application. That's what it says in the 12 factor um, statements. And that means, well, typically by environment variables or by files, right? And microprofile fault uh, configuration actually and uh, allows us to do that so what we can do is use this config property um, annotation that comes from the micro profile package and that enables us to well for example inject some strings some application server version assuming that is configured somewhere and then we can include a name what's the name of that very property for example it's called version and now if you ask yourself, well, where does that come from? Assuming we have a Docker image or a Docker container that at runtime includes this information as an Unix environment variable, then, well, we can simply refer to it by this name and it will read from this default config source and it will just work. And it doesn't matter 
if that's upper or lower case, that it's case in, uh, insensitive for our environment variables, and we can just use it right away. And that's basically it. And then, well, just for the sake of the example, let's use this and include it in our HTTP header. So what we say, we specify response.ok. But now this time with an HTTP header that I call Open Liberty version, I will tell you later on that I use the Open Liberty application server. So let's call this like that and dot builds and return it. And that's a very basic example how to use, well, the injectable configuration. Another example that I already added was this fault tolerance API. And my application is actually a part of a microservice deployment. So this microservice will talk to another one that is called, well, barista backend, since we are in a coffee world. And specifically that functionality that is an HTTP client that will talk to another application and well has some functionality here that we might want to guard with some resiliency pattern Spe so specifically we want to add so-called circuit breaker that we can well using fault tolerance simply enable using this annotation at circuit breaker that we could also um, optionally configure and as you can read here, well, this enables that functionality with some specific default configuration. You can have a look at the microprofile uh, fault tolerance um, specification, how, how exactly that works. But the nice story is, as you can already see, the whole microprofile well, specification and projects use a very similar look and feel and developer experience that we know already from Java EE, right? So we have annotations here. We use the same AUP aspect oriented programming models to somewhat enable this in a declarative approach, which comes, I would say, very naturally if you're used to enterprise uh, Java uh, frameworks. So this is just a very, very basic example how we can add well, con uh, config and fault tolerance here. And now let's build our project. Let's build the coffee shop project with Maven. So we issue a Maven claim package that builds our wall file. And well, same story as I told you before. So we still have a thin deployment artifact because actually we will use an application server that supports this programming model that actually supports both Java EE and MicroProfile. So what I will use here is I use the Open Liberty application server. And um, I will have a Docker file that I will also build in a second that actually, well, includes my application, of course, then some optional server configuration and the, well, base image that includes, of course, Java and in this case, an Open Liberty in a specific version. So what we do then is, well, we actually want to tell the application server what we want to use here, right? Since that is now, um, a default server.xml configuration. Since we do not only want to use Java EE 8, that so-called feature, but also, well, a few others. And now that's becoming quite interesting how you want to configure that runtime. So Open Liberty out of the box supports, well, a lot of things that I can show you uh, in a second, a lot of so-called features. And now we want to enable, well, specifically for my example, microprofile con uh, configuration and fault tolerance here so that actually the server will know about that feature. And then, well, we do not have to ship that implementation. So that's a nice story about that. The deployment model is the same that we know from Java Enterprise. And we just deploy our thin deployment artifact. We configure the server, on the other hand, to use that feature. And then it, it works with, well, all these microprofile enhancements. So. If I want to build my Docker image here, Docker built using the coffee shop name, Jakarta E microprofile, then I just built this and thanks to thin deployment artifacts, that's super fast. And what we can do is there is a so-called feature info um, available from the product info binary that ships with this and it well tells you the list of all these features that are included. So for example, there's even a microprofile umbrella feature that would add all of the microprofile projects if you would need them. So that's actually also um, available, which is quite similar to this Java EE8 feature because that includes, of course, all of the um, Java EE standards that are part of EE8. So not only CDI, JAXRS, but many, many others, JSON and um, persistence and uh, so on and so forth. 
So what you actually can do if you want to further optimize the, the runtime here is just include these fe features you actually need. So even if you're built on Java EE, you still can say, well, for some reason, I don't even need persistence in my project or I don't need EJBs or so on and so forth. And then just mix and match the features that you want, uh, that you want to use. So here you can have a quick look at that project at all these sources are available on GitHub. And while well, the Open Liberty site also will tell you in the uh, documentation about all these features and the specific configuration, how that works. And then while well, all of these features are listed here and what they mean and what they enable. And well, now, of course, we want to finally run our application to, well, see how, how that looks. So let's run this with the local port 9080 and our image name, Jakarta Marco profile and run it. And then, well, it will start up and actually also tell us all these features that are that are installed, and then we can well use that right away. So there are a few application servers out there that support that support this uh, programming model. So Open Liberty is one example. Um, other examples would be Tommy, uh, Widefly, and Payara. So all of them support Java EE8 and the latest MicroProfile version. And then you can mix and match well all these standards that you need enable a server with a thin deployment artifact approach, and then just build them into well, a Docker image and ship your application while while enabling the same deployment and development model that you know, if you already use Java Enterprise, and just using new features that otherwise you would need to implement yourselves, right? So of course, you could implement a circuit breaker or injectable configuration in one class and not that much uh, code, not that many lines of codes. A code, but of course it's easier to use well existing standards and existing projects here. So if we now want to ask our application to well see which version there is and if, whether it's up and running, then I actually we can see well this work the um, injected configuration that was actually injected by the Docker image, and um, it got configured by MicroProfile. So that is one approach how we can use these um, technologies together and how we can well enable Java Enterprise plain Java EE slash Jakarta EE projects to well fill the gaps that we still might have with using specific microprofile standards by using somewhat a best um, best of both worlds. Thanks a lot for watching.